Hi everyone, this is Jason from Lightspeed, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add new items to your inventory and how to update existing items using the new import tool. To get started, we're going to click on inventory from our main menu and head to the import items button. If it's your first time here, you're going to get this pop-up show up and it's going to give you a couple of important bits of information, such as you can only create up to 1,000 items per import, the file format must be in CSV file, and if you want to get started, you can download this template CSV here to see an example of what a properly formatted file would look like. That's going to have all of the available column headers in it with some data that we've populated in there just to get you started. I've already downloaded that template and I've also filled it out. You can see here I've actually pared it down to just the few columns that I actually am interested in. I've narrowed it down to description, vendor, price, online price, whether or not the item is taxable, the tax class, the category and the subcategory. Of note, you'll see that in the online price, I've elected not to sell this online, so I've written not sold online. That's going to be important later. These are the items that I want to import. Of course, you can do up to a thousand items. It's a fairly small size import just for example purposes. But to get started, we're going to click on the new import button in the top right. And we'll select our file. You can drag and drop or browse to find it. Here you'll be asked, are you going to be creating new items and updating existing items at the same time? Will you be doing only an update of existing items, or will you be creating new items? In either of the first cases, if you're going to be updating existing items, it's going to ask you which field to match on. What this means is that Lightspeed is going to go through the import file and say, which of the items in the existing inventory are these updates for? You can match on the system ID, which is recommended because every item is guaranteed to have a system ID and that system ID is guaranteed to be unique. But you can also match on UPC, EAN, custom SKU, or manufacturer. In this particular case, I'm going to be creating new items. So I'll say only create new items, in which case there's nothing, nothing to match on. And you can see that that field grays out on its own. It says here, click continue to validate the CS file because before we import, Lightspeed is going to verify that all of the information in our file makes sense. So we'll go ahead and click continue and find out what happens. You can see here it's told us that we have five errors to fix. We can choose to download the file with errors attached. And we'll see here that on our file we have two new columns. We've got errors and suggested fixes. And we can see up here that we're being told that the online price value is not supported because the format for online price must be a number. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this just by removing the entire column. And then we'll save this file. As new item import corrected. I'm showing you this because I want you to notice that I've left the errors and suggested fixes columns there. Those will be ignored by the import tool when we switch back. So I can just head back to our import. I'll say upload a different CSV. We'll browse to find our new file, the corrected file. And let's validate this one. You can see that there were no errors this time around, so it's going to give us a preview of the import. You can enter in your email here. Once the import has been completed, you'll receive a notification of that. It's going to show me an item preview. So you can see the first item on my import, Rising Sun, uh, with the vendor included, the category, the price, whether or not the item class, whether or not it's taxable and discountable, and so on. If we're ready to proceed, we'll click on Import Items. And here we have our import summary. Status is done, so let's go check on our inventory. And we'll find here under item search all of the new items that I've added, including Rising Sun, our preview example, have all been added to the inventory. I am noticing here, though, that the category for my new items has been properly filled out, but I was a little bit lazy with the first items that I had previous to this import, and those categories have not been filled out quite the same way. So let's do another import where we update the category information for those items. 
We'll head back to inventory and we'll go back to import items. We'll get our familiar page here. We'll click continue to go through it and start a new import. Now I've already taken the liberty of downloading my item search. Uh, I exported it from item search. I've made some changes to the file to make the headers match what we're looking for. And I've also updated the information that we want to update. So let's go take a look at what that file looks like. We can see here I've pared it down to just system ID because I need something to match to, the item description, the categories that I wanted to update, and the manufacturer and vendor, which I also wanted to update in a couple of cases. You can see here under MSRP, I've also added null to everything across the board. I've decided I wanted to zero out MSRP for all of the items in my inventory, and null is going to do that for me. Let's go ahead and upload this file now. We're gonna set our behavior to only update existing items and to match on system ID. We'll click continue to validate. We can see that we received no errors this time around. We're getting our import preview and we're ready to import. Here's our status on the import. We can see that the status is set to done. We have updated 15 items. Let's go take a look at what our inventory looks like now. And we can see that the categories have been updated across the board. This concludes our video, but be sure to check out our help pages for lots more videos.